Okay, so let's start with the rational numbers. Um, the rational numbers. Okay. Um, this is the so-called Bourbaki notation. I hope you've seen it before. Um, uh, uh, let's start with this. Right. N, the N is used for the natural numbers. Natural numbers. Uh, Z for the integers. Uh, Q for the rational numbers. Uh, R for the real numbers. Uh, C for the complex numbers. Okay. This is this is common common notation. Every mathematician uses this notation. Okay. So, um, okay, these are created by the the non-existent mathematician Bourbaki, uh, who published many papers and books in the, I don't know, in the mid 20th century. Um, and then, uh, you know, people would try to invite him to, uh, to give talks, and they would invariably get a note saying, you know, I, I'm an old man, and I cannot travel, or something like that. Um, Bourbaki tend not to exist, tend not, not to exist. He was actually a group of mathematicians working together. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but I've seen a letter from him, you know, in 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 a Indiana University's math department. He says, uh, "Thank you for your kind invitation. You know, I, I, due, due to my old age, I'm unable to travel." That's like, you know, this sort of thing. Um, anyway, so um, yeah, uh, yeah. I had a friend who was so crazy about Bourbaki's works that he changed his name uh, to <laughs> to Nicholas. You know, the, uh, it's Nicholas Bubaki. Um So he changed his name to Nicholas. He spent all his time, uh, uh, all his spare time, reading Bourbaki in the library. Okay. Um, okay. So let's start with the rational numbers Q. Right? Rational numbers. You know what those are? Somebody tell me what those are. What are rational numbers, Max? Anything that can be expressed as A over B, where A and B are integers. Okay. Right. So anything that can be expressed as A over B, um, right? Where uh, a and B are are integers, right? Anything that can be expressed as A A over B, right? Where A and B are in the integers, right? A and B are in the integers. Okay. Um, well, let me actually. Uh, I'm just going to erase that for now because I haven't introduced the notation. But um, anyway, the rational numbers. And let me just start off by saying that Q has problems. Right? The rational numbers have problems. Um, one could be described as algebraic incompleteness. It's somehow so Q is somehow incomplete in, in various ways. Okay, one way is is could be called algebraic incompleteness, um, <coughs> and that is that uh, one can uh, make Equations uh, with with uh, coefficients in Q, but no solutions. But no solutions. You know, for example, x squared minus two equals zero. Okay, right. I, if I live in the world of Q, right, my world is, is rational numbers, I, I, it doesn't take much for me to, 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 to make up an equation where they, for which there's no answer, right? There's no answer, um, we'll, we'll, we'll go over this again in a second, there's no, there's no answer in Q for this equation, right? Um, so algebraic incompleteness, another, it, it should be called uh, kind of, you know, like an analytic incompleteness. Um, one can find a sequence in Q um, that approaches uh, a point that that is not in Q. Okay, so <coughs> right. That is, if I look at the sequence 1, 1.4, 1.41, 1.414, 1.4142, 1.4143, 1.4144, 1.4144, 1.4144, 1.4144, 1.4144, 1.4144, 1.4144, 1.4144, 1.4144, 1.4144, 1.4144, 1.4144, 1
it is the beginning, you know, the, the initial, like you take the square root of two and cut it off at, uh, you know, these, these, these guys are approaching the square root of two, right? These are all rational numbers, right? But they're approaching something and there's a hole there, right? In Q, there's nothing there, right? So you're approaching this thing and, the, and, and there's, there's, no, there's no object um, at the end of it, okay? So there's sort of a, the, right? there's a gap, right? Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, let's uh, recall the argument, the famous argument, that the square root of 2 is not rational. Famous argument that the square root of 2 is not rational. Okay, so, um, right, so prime, that's, that the square root of 2 is not rational, right? Oops, square root of 2 is not rational, excuse me. Square root of 2 is not an element of the rationals, right? It's not in the rationals. Okay. Does anybody, anybody know this argument? Okay. Um, how about, what's your name? I don't know. Lyra. Lyra. Yeah. Okay. Lyra, please. Um, so it means that root 2 is irrational, so for any, um, um, rational numbers can all be expressed in a fraction A and B. Um, and there's, there's like different ways you can prove that. So, so yeah, so you say, okay, let's, um, uh, right, so to be in, to be in Q, right, means that uh, uh, can be expressed as A over B, where a and B are integers. A and B are integers. And B is not zero. Right? And the proof is, is something, the, the famous proof um, from 2,500 years ago is uh, it's a, a proof by contradiction. It's a proof by contradiction. Okay. How many of you have seen a proof by contradiction? No, close your eyes for a second. Raise a finger if you have not seen a proof by contradiction. Okay, great. Okay, open your eyes, please. Thank you. Okay, so proof by contradiction, we're going to assume, what do we do? We, we assume that the square root of 2 actually is a rational number. Okay, start off by assuming that the square root of 2 is a rational number. Well, what does that mean? Um, it means that the square root of 2 can be expressed as p over q, where where p and q are in uh, in z, and q is q is not zero, right? Okay, and um, we can assume, right? Uh, we can assume also that p and q have no common factors. Because if they have common factors, you know, suppose um, if they have common factors, right? If you have like two over four, well, just divide the top by two and the divide by the bottom by four. I have by two also, right? Divide them both by two, right? Just divide divide by that common factor. Okay. So, so uh, without loss, without losing any generality, without loss of generality, without loss. Of generality, right? In other words, we're not we're not weakening our proof by making this assumption. Um, without loss of generality, we assume that that p and q have no common factors. Okay. Okay. So you say, okay, well. Um, the square root of two is p over q, and then you just make some make some deductions from there. Well, what does that what does that tell you? If the square root of two is p over q, the, I'm sure you've all read it. What's the, what do we do next? Mitchell? P square. P square. Square both sides. Square both sides, right? Then certainly two is p squared over over q squared. <coughs> certainly we can multiply both sides by by q squared. Two q squared is equal to p squared, right? 
And so um, you see that, um, uh, where do you go from here? The P has to be. P squared is even, right? So P squared, right? So you see that uh, 2 divides P squared, right? 2 divides P squared. In other words, P squared is even, right? And from knowing that P squared is even, P is you can conclude that, that P is also even, right? So P is even. Right? It's easy enough to see that if P were odd, then P squared has to be odd also, right? Easy exercise. P odd implies uh, P squared odd. Right? But if you're doing it properly, that's you would also you would have to include that fact. Right? If you're writing a, actually writing this proof formally. Right? So P is even. In other words, P is equal to 2M for some, some integer M. Okay. Okay. So going back to uh, going back to this point, let's call this this thing star. By star, we see that uh, 2Q squared is equal to 4M squared. And thus, q squared is 2m squared, right? In lot to divide by 2. OK. And thus, um, you see that uh, q squared is even. Right? Because q, q squared is twice you know, some, some natural number. Okay, so Q squared is even, and then what, what do you conclude from there? Q is, Q is, also, Q is also even, right? The same, what we said before, right? We saw if, if P squared is even, then P is even. Well, knowing that Q squared is even will give us that Q is even, right? So Q is even, Q is also even, right? And so we reach a contradiction, right? What's the contradiction? They don't, they don't have common factors. Right, so the contradiction is that um, we said uh, that um, uh, that P and Q don't have any common factors, right? So uh, we said um, we said well we said well look let's uh, let's assume that the square root of two uh, is rational. Let's assume that the square root of 2 is rational. If it is rational, we can express it like this as p over q, where p over q don't, don't have any common factors. Okay. But then we say, okay, and if that's true, this is true, this is, this is true. And so uh, p and q are both even. Okay, and so they do have common factors. Okay. So what we get is that assuming that the square root of 2 is rational, leads to nonsense, right? leads to non logical contradiction, right? If, if, there were, if there were a rational number that, um, whose square was 2, then you would end up with, the, with these guys having no, com no, no common factors and yet being both even, right? That's impossible, right? And so it must be that, um, that the square root of 2 is, is not rational, okay? So, um, uh, so the square root of 2 cannot be in Q. It has to be an irrational number. Okay. Okay. Uh, talk to some neighbor of yours. So turn to somebody nearby. Say hello. Make friends. And um, and yeah, talk for a minute.
Hello. Uh, nice to meet you. I have this final question about the location. What is, what is, the, what is this location after five? Star. So I put the star here to mark this equation. So I'm, I'm just saying by this equation, by, by, that, by that equation. So that's the same as the same as So you use star as a reference. Yeah. You know, in the textbook, there'll be equations and marked with numbers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Equations one, equation two. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is the blackboard version of this. Okay. Yeah. You know, I made like, I made mark something else as double stars. Okay. Yeah. We're having a mild discussion here. Something less exotic than that. For instance, 0.17 with a 7 repeating decimal. Yeah. Is that rational or irrational? It's rational. Any any rational any any number with a any uh, number with a repeating with a repetition of it, you can see that it's going to be rational, and vice versa. What about point one zero one one zero one 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 zero? So I know what happens next. Right. Is so it, it, it's, it's actually no. So that will be irrational, right? So it's it's actually um, uh, it's actually very easy to distinguish rationals from irrationals. With their with their decimal expansions, if there is a repetition, right? If it if it ends up, you know, blah blah blah, you know, one four two eight five seven, you know, repeating, you know that it's going to be it has to be rational. If it's rational, then you're going to end up with a repeating decimal. Okay. So the rationals are exactly those numbers that have repeating decimals. Even if it will come back, but it doesn't repeat in a pre-programmed manner, that could possibly be irrational. So if it, if it doesn't if it doesn't end up like this, then it's going to be irrational. Okay. irrational. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's it's easier to distinguish. Okay. Uh, yeah. Are there other questions? Okay. Okay. So um, okay, any 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 questions on the on the proof? This is a famous proof from 2,500 years ago. It has some history to it. Um, it was uh, discovered by the Pythagoreans, who uh, initially believed that all numbers were rational, right? And so they had this system of of the world, sort of a mystic understanding of the world based on the idea that everything was was number, right? Everything is number, and number for them meant rational numbers, right? Um, yes. Can all irrational numbers be proved by this way? Um, roots can, roots can, but but no, <laughs> no. For example, um, you know the proof that pi is an irrational number is not not like this. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. No, but but you'll find that for roots that roots of non-perfect squares, then then this method can be used. Yeah, and if you want, you can try it, like on the square root of three or the square root of five, as, as an exercise. Um, yeah. So the Pythagoreans had this understanding of the world as you know, sort of being ordered and orderly, but you know they had a, some mysteries, and one was if everything is ratio, then what is what is the ratio for the length? What is the what is the ratio that expresses this this length here? Right, right. This is you know it should be we know what it is. It's the square root of two, right? But for them it was the the sort of unknowable thing, okay. And it turned out that you know there is there is no expression for it. There is no ratio of integers that will give you this number, right? It's um, I think they call it the the like the undescribable, right? The beyond language, or something beyond language, um, and. Um, uh, and the story is that the person who discovered this fact and overthrew their, their view of the world was, was they killed him immediately. <laughs> but they threw him, they, he was on a boat, he came up with this, he realized that this was actually beyond the rational numbers, and they threw him, threw him off. <laughs> That's the story. I don't know, a long time ago, they, there was a cartoon called Rain the, Con Rain the Conqueror. Um, and uh, like, I think the whole story could be understood as the fear of irrational numbers coming, 
Right. Um, yeah, it, it was this sort of like story about and Alexander the Great and like this kind of wacky, weird story. But for me, it was a story about their their fear of irrational numbers. And at the very end, like the irrational numbers were created. <laughs> what? Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, 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 okay. So, so the rational numbers have a hole, right? There's a hole. There's a hole in the rational numbers, right? If I if I look at um, uh, x squared minus two, right? I look at x squared minus two, and my world is the rational numbers. Then there's actually a hole here, right? There's no place where if I'm if my world is the rational numbers, then there's no intersection of this thing with with the with the x-axis, right? There's no point. There's a hole there, right? Right? Because that hole is the square root of two, and we don't have the square root of two. Right? Okay. okay. So um, the rational numbers have this hole there. Uh, uh, we look at the points p. Uh, actually. So let me just make sure that everybody is okay with with um, with set notation. Set notation, right? Um, uh, if I write this, uh, right? What does this mean? Like x is an element of a, right? X x is an element of a, right? Um, if I write this. Then x is not an element of A, right? Like um, you, uh, Abel, is a member of the students in this class, right? I am not a member of the students in this class, right? Um, uh, if I write A subset B, what does that mean? What does that mean? A is contained in B, but not A is contained in B. In other words, um, x, x in A implies that x is in b, right? Anything that is in a is going to be in, inside of b, right? In other words, a, a is contained in b, right? Any element. So this is equivalent to, I hope you've seen this notation too, right? Is equivalent to, right? Is logically equivalent to, right? So uh, this means, right, implies This implies that, right? So, uh, this notation, A being a subset of B, A a subset of B, means that if X is in A, then X is in B. Okay. Right? Like, um, the set of students in this class is a subset of the set of students in this school. Right? right. right. Anybody who's here, is a student in the school, except for Mr. L. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, besides Mr. L. <laughs> okay. Um, right. And if I wrote uh, uh, A is a superset of B, right? Then of course it's the opposite. Right? Anybody who is in B is in A. Right. Everybody on me? Right. If I say A is equal to B. How do I, what does that mean? Right, this is the same thing as saying that A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. Right, okay. Um, in other words, another way of saying that is that X is in A is equivalent to X being in B. Right, X is in A if and only if X is in B. Yes. I'm sorry, what's your name? Fayon. Fayon. Uh, you differentiate between proper subsets and subsets. Yes, but in general we don't care. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not when I say when I use this, I don't mean proper subset subset. I mean just subset. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? Okay. Okay. So Okay, 
so just basic segmentation, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've seen it before. Okay. Uh, so let's get back to here. Uh, so we're back in, back in the rational numbers again. Um, <coughs> and what we're going to do is uh, consider two sets. And these sets you've seen in, in, if you've done the reading. So the sets are the points in the rational numbers, right? All the points in the rational numbers that are bigger than 0 and whose square is less than 2. The points in the rational numbers whose, who are, that are bigger than 0 and whose square is less than 2. Okay. And we'll also consider B, the points in the rational numbers whose square is bigger than 0. I'm sorry, whose, that are bigger than 0 and whose square is bigger than 2. So you know, in the picture, you see that you know, A is A is these guys, B is everybody else, right? Everybody whose square is less than two, everybody whose square is greater than two. Okay. 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 And what we're going to show is that um, A has no biggest element. And B has no smallest. Okay, A has no biggest element, B has no smallest. And it should be kind of mysterious to you. Many things about this should be mysterious. One is why do we care? Um, but you'll see why we care. Okay. The whole point of this first chapter is to impress upon you what's special about the real numbers. Okay, what is special about the real numbers in in contrast with the rational numbers? Why are we unhappy with the rational numbers? Well, we've given some some sense, some sense of it, but there's another way of expressing that that lack, and that um, is sort of related to this idea of biggest elements and smallest elements. Okay, it's the so-called least upper bound property. Um, in case you've seen it before. Okay, the least, least upper bound axiom that allows you to uh, create the real numbers. Okay, okay, so um, okay, so we're going to show that A has no largest element. So uh, let let P be an A, and let <coughs> so I should say, let's say like this: pick pick any P in A. Okay, so pick any pick any element in the rationals that is in A. Here it is P. Okay. And then you create uh, a second number, Q being P minus P squared minus 2 or P plus 2. Mitchell. Why? Why? Why is Q equal to that? Did anyone did anyone figure it out? No, I asked a question in email. Question. Yes, yes. It was asked by multiple people. Anybody figure it out? I'll give you a hint. Newtonian approximation. Newtonian approximation. That's not exactly the right hint, but it's it's the it is the so it's in that direction. Okay. Anyway, so yeah. So let's let's go on and, and maybe we'll say something about it after. Okay. So let Q be, be this mysterious number. Q is this mysterious number. Notice that, that Q is a rational number. Right? Q is a rational number because it's this P squared minus 2 over P plus 2 is a rational number. P is a rational number. It's a difference of rational numbers. It's a rational number. Right? Right? Okay. So notice that this guy is a rational number. Um, uh, <coughs> then uh, it's an easy arithmetic to see that um, q squared minus 2 equals 2 p squared minus 2 over p plus 2 quantity squared. So that's just, that's just arithmetic, I don't know, elementary school, junior high school, something like that. Okay. So, uh, right, and uh, if since P is in A, we know that 
uh, p squared minus 2 is negative. Right? p squared minus 2 is less than 0. Right? And so you have a negative number over a positive number. So, uh, so this is less than zero. Right? You've got this net. P, P is an A. Remember what that means? <coughs> that P squared is less than 2. Right? So P squared minus 2 is negative. And so this thing, this whole thing is negative. And so we see that, <coughs> right, that this number is negative. Right? That, that Q squared minus 2 is less than 0. In other words, that q squared is less than 2. OK. <coughs> OK. Right, so q squared is less than 2, right? right? So q is an a. q is also an a. OK, so we picked this guy in a. And we made up some other guy who is also in A. Okay, we pick this guy in A. We create the second guy. He's also in A. Okay, um, why do we care? Uh, but notice, also notice that Q is P minus P squared minus two over P plus two, right? And what do we? What can we say about about this this term here? Yeah, Right? P squared minus 2 is negative. Right? So we've got negative, a negative number over a positive number. So this is positive. Right? Yeah. So Q is P plus a positive number. Right? In other words, Q is bigger than P. Okay. Q is bigger than P. OK? So what happens is what, what, do, we, what do we get? For any any p in A that you choose, we can we can write down a another guy in A who's bigger, right? Any p in A that you choose for any element in A, there's always a bigger element in A, right? That's 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 the argument, right? Uh, for any element in A, there's in English for any element in A, there is a larger element still in A. Right? No matter how great this guy is, there's always somebody greater. Yes. Is this similar to the Archimedes principle? I'm not sure. I'm sorry. Are you, are you talking about Archimede, uh, Archimedean property? Yeah. Oh, oh. Um, we don't have the Archimedean property. We don't have the Archimedean property yet. So. Um, it's sort of like that because yes, what you're saying, what we're saying is that you can always find somebody in between that's a rational number. So if we had that already, we could just use it, but we don't have the real numbers, and yeah. So yeah, but yes, yes, the the you're sort of on the same topic. Yeah. Okay. 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 Right. Any questions so far? Any questions? So that is the proof that A has no largest element. Okay. And you'll see that if we assumed uh, P to be in B, then, uh, then things would reverse. Okay, things would reverse. We get Q squared is bigger than two, so Q is in B, and this Q would be smaller, smaller than P. Okay, so the same proof, right? Uh, proof of second part is identical. Or at least, I should say maybe just similar. Yes, Helen. So, in like notation terms, we pretty much prove that for all P and A, there is a Q, it's just a Q squared. Yes, it's. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so that's, that's what I was starting to, starting to write here. I, uh, for all P and A, there exists a Q in A such that Q is bigger than P. That's that's what we're that's that's what we're showing, right? We, that's what we wanted to show. Given any p and a, there exists a q and a such that q is bigger than p, right? And that's what we've shown. Okay. Maybe I should introduce 
should remind or introduce people the very terse notation. Right? This means for all. The upside down A means for all. The backwards E means there exists. Such ST is an abbreviation for such that. Um, such that, I think, is kind of old fashioned English. Maybe in modern English, you should say with the property that. Like, with the property that. So this is, again, notation that every mathematician uses. Aria. The vertical line, like a pipe, is that here then? Like Where? P, an element of Q, A equals a, yeah. Oh, here? This is also such that, actually. Okay. So this is a such, I'm sorry, I should have said that. This is a such that. So A is the set of, A is the set of rational numbers P with the property that P is bigger than zero and if the squares, is less, squares are less than two. Okay. So we're looking at the set of those guys. So you have two more, two more notations to remember. It's OK. Two things. It's, you can remember two things in a minute. It's not like when I was taking Japanese and the, and the teacher said, you know, learn the Japanese alphabet by tomorrow. <laughs> yes, Susan. Can we also have um, proved this using the contradiction, proof by contradiction? So suppose A has no, suppose that A has the biggest element and then Maybe approach it and then... I don't know. I mean, maybe. Uh, yeah, uh, you can... I, I think that that's fun. That sounds like a fun thing to try. It might be a similar... Yeah. 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 Um, oh, oh, using the same yeah. argument? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So you could, yeah, you'd say, suppose that there is nobody bigger, and then you create somebody who is bigger. But that's, in some sense, that's not a true proof by contradiction. <laughs> you've, you've got the direct proof already, right? right? So why, why, do, why resort to contradiction when you, when you don't have to? Some people don't like proof by contradiction. They, they prefer direct proofs. There's sort of a stylistic preference for direct proofs, um, even though there's no reason for it. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So, so yeah, so I was thinking, uh, so, so wh why did we choose this number? Why did we choose this number? Um, if you look at something called Newtonian approximation, um, uh, this, this isn't exactly what's going on here, but it's very close. It's very close. Um, so Newtonian approximation, um, it's, uh, if you if you have suppose I I have this guy x squared minus two, and I have some point I make some guess as to the actual answer. Right. So suppose I'm looking for the square root of two. Suppose I'm looking for the square root of two. I make some guess. Right. Here's my guess. It's irrational. It, it, it's some number. Okay. Well, N Newton's idea is to uh, take the curve here and then take a tangent line to it take a tangent line to it and see where that tangent line crosses the line. Okay. And that's a that's another that's your second refinement. That's the refinement of your guess. So that's if I call this one P1, then P2 would be here. Right? And then you keep on going. You say, okay, well that's that's a little bit better. I I take the tangent line here and see where that guy crosses the line. And you get closer and closer. Okay, so this is the process of, of, of Newtonian approximation. Um, and it's pretty closely related to uh, how you how you guess this uh, guess this this second guy. Okay. Um, there's a, a a discrete version of it that gives you this this number. So now things are going to get a little bit weird, um, but again, this is all to answer what's so great about the real numbers. Okay. Okay. So um, we're going to have to uh, introduce some some terms. Okay. So ordered sets. <coughs> so 
definition. Let S be a set. And uh, let this thing be a binary relation on S uh, with the property that um, one given any, so for every pair x, y in S, every pair of, of elements in S, only one of x less than y, x equals y, x uh, y less than x is true. And two, um, if x is less than y, y is less than z, then x is less than z, right? So for any x, y, z, in s, if x is less than y, y is less than z, then x is less than z. The transitive, transitive. So you have a set, and you have this, 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 this relation. And if the relation satisfies these two qualities, then, so um, in that case, we call, we call the relation an order on S, and we call the pair S with that order, an ordered set. Yes, Fina? How is equality defined? Equality is just set equality, right? You've got an element of the set if the element is the same as some other element in the set, right? So yeah, if, if you're talking about sets, you have elements in the set, right? So. You know, you can say once one element, you know, if, if, if these two guys are equal to that one element, then they're the same element, right? So equality is just, you know, just what you think it is, right? It's, 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 it's just the, it's just, uh, you know, from, from, from sets. Is this a collection of distinct elements? Is it possible that two things look good from the very equal? No. Okay. No. Yeah, that's sort of a mysterious question. Um, but I was just wondering if it's like the negation of x smaller than y and y smaller than x. So I hope no. No. no, 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 no. Okay. No, there's no, uh, there's no relation, no, necessary relation between these things at this point. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So okay, so this is yeah, this is sort of like an abstract abstract thing, but you actually know you know some examples of ordered sets. Probably come up with some examples of ordered sets. Somebody give me an example of an ordered set. Uh, Max. The integers. The integers, right? So you can have the integers with the sort of standard standard ordering, right? Um, where you say that um, uh, a is less than b means that uh, uh, b minus a is is uh, non-negative, right? Is positive. Right, a minus a is in the positive integers. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Or you could, you know, you could use this for the, um, uh, right. Um, any other examples that people can think of? Ordered sets. Let me give you um, a question. Uh, 
Suppose we suppose we say that uh, A is less than B, that the sets A and B, that A is less than B if A is a subset of B. Is that in order? Yes? Because the angle also would still be a subset of A, right? Yeah, so I guess let's let's say what what should we what should we say this as? Um, so we've been using this as um, as just uh, yeah, so could be could be a could be equal to, right? So, so the answer is no, right? Because, um, yeah, so it's no. Is, so this uh, is not in order, right? Because you could have uh, one set including another, and, they, and yet they could be equal to each other, right? Okay. What happens if we, if we change that to, to, if we think of this as proper inclusion? If it's proper inclusion, is it in order? Is it in order? Yeah. Right. Sure. Right. You can. If it's proper inclusion, then um, only one of these things is going to happen. Um, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Actually, no. Right. Why is there? What if those are mutually exclusive? Two sets. They're. Uh, they're not mutually. There's, there's, no, uh, there's no relation, right? So suppose you have something like this. So yeah. So actually, no. It's not. It's actually not in order, right? Because you, it has to be a binary relation on the on the set, and you could have two sets that doesn't make for which this relation doesn't make any sense, right? You have A and B, and none of these is true, <laughs> right? It's not true that that A is not a subset of Y. Uh, a is not a subset of B. A is not equal to B, and B is not a subset of Y. Uh, okay. So, so no. So for, uh, in either case, it's not in order. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, I guess let's stop here for today. Let's stop here for today.